Joining me now to talk about his new book, Sons of the Father, is author and award-winning filmmaker Daniel Kuhlman. Welcome back to 100 Huntley Street, Daniel. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure to have you join us today. And you know, in your new book, you share that the Bible has a few major themes in it, running throughout the entire biblical narrative, but that one of the major themes, if not the major theme, is this theme of sonship. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about the theme of sonship in the Bible? Absolutely, and it actually was quite an exciting thing to discover because this a few years ago, this was actually quite new to me. Sonship is defined as being not only in relationship to the Father, but actually that's how Webster defines it. I define it as being in right relationship with the Father, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the Heavenly Father. And the theme that runs through the Bible so powerfully is this theme of sonship. And if you just look at a few quick examples, after the creation days when the Father was making everything, it actually climaxed and the masterpiece of his creation was making a son, the son of God, Adam, which in the genealogy that's written in the Bible, it literally goes through and says that Adam was the son of God. So the father, Yahweh, was literally Adam's father. This creates the entire relationship narrative that we're supposed to see as children of the father, God. And when Jesus was on earth, who was the incarnate son of the father, he actually spoke about this in all of his parables, all of his sermons, that the best way that we can relate to God in heaven is not as some big, unreachable judge in the sky, but as literally as a son relates to a father. Well, it's so interesting, Daniel, because there are so many great theologians throughout the centuries that have really come to the conclusion that sonship and this relationship of child and father in heaven is really the core heart of what the Bible is saying. And, you know, when we read the New Testament through these eyes of sonship and we start to see the life of Jesus with this theme of sonship in mind, we gain a lot of new insights. And in your book, you point out some of those insights. Can you share some of them with us right now? One of the big ones and the way that the book kind of is book ended in terms of the story is the story when Barabbas was released. We call this moment the great exchange in scripture. You know, people talk about it as the great exchange where Christ is on trial and given the option of releasing either an insurrectionist murderer or Jesus who literally was healing and raising people from the dead, they chose the insurrectionist murderer and put Jesus Christ on the cross. Of course, he also went willingly, but the point is that the crowd also chose that they wanted Jesus to be crucified. And so in the book, it's kind of bookended on this premise of we are Barabbas, we are in the cell hearing that call from afar, crucify him, being yelled. That's the part of the conversation we can hear. And we think that we are the one going to be crucified and we're worthy of it. We deserve it. Our sin has separated us from God. We should be the one crucified. But then Jesus walks by and there's no, there's no guile in him. There's no judgment in him. He actually came to rescue and to save and to deliver. And he walks by Barabbas and the exchange happens. And in that moment, Barabbas realizes Jesus is going to die for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how Barabbas would not be saved and see salvation that day because he literally passed by Yeshua, the Hebrew name for Jesus, which means salvation. So he encountered salvation in the flesh and he was set free from his prison cell. That is essentially the gospel. And here's the big one, Laura. This is the one that shook me and why I wrote the book is because Barabbas is Hebrew for son mm -hmm. of the father. Barabbas literally means in Hebrew, son of the father. And so when Jesus, the son of the father, was at that trial, another son of the father, Barabbas, separated from God, mm. thinking that he wasn't able to ever be close to God. Well, God, the father saw him as a son and he sent his only son, the begotten son, Jesus, to rescue and to transform and to save. And so as he walked by Barabbas, Barabbas literally became a son of the father and how amazing that in the scripture these layers are there that his name actually means that it's so incredible it's interesting i didn't know those insights and you know uh, really really it was astounding for me to understand barabbas and the connection to jesus the meanings of their names and it takes me back to the book of genesis you mentioned earlier about adam being the son of you know God and that's what the consideration of who Adam was and there was this right relationship until humans fell um, and of course Jesus becomes the second Adam for us he becomes the son of God and and does all those things you just said Jesus did for Bar Barabbas he did for all of us 
And through what Jesus has done, we have a new identity. And this identity is one of sonship. And it's so important you touch on this in the book, but when we have our, an understanding of our true identity in God, through this sonship relationship that males and females can have, it changes everything. Talk to us about that identity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, thank you for that note about this sonship does not merely apply to men or to boys. It's very, very important to actually mention this, that the principle of sonship is a spiritual principle that we understand because scripturally it was written and talks about inheritance. It talks about the firstborn son receiving the inheritance, that this is the relationship we're talking about is a spiritual identity of sonship. So it applies equally to sons and daughters. Um, so we use this catch-all phrase of sonship, but it applies to all of the children of God. It's really important to see that. But some of the benefits, honestly, how could you, uh, according to you know what John said, if we talked about all the benefits, we wouldn't be able to fit them in all the earth because it's absolutely tremendous what Jesus has done for us. But some of the ones that stand out are that the big ones, life and death. So if you think about death, when you're a son, death is a pathway to life, to everlasting life, to real life, to the life that you actually will be forever connected perfectly with your heavenly father. You'll actually have the son of God in your family. Romans 8, 29 says that he predestined us to be the, that Jesus was set apart to be the firstborn of many brothers and that we are predestined to be siblings with Jesus. I mean, if we could actually grasp that, it would literally change everything about every day in our life. And you mentioned theologians earlier, J.I. Packer wrote an incredible book called Knowing God. He actually said in there, and I'm listening to the audiobook right now, and I'm like, oh man, this is like, I feel like these books could be sequels. You know, it's like, it's an amazing, consistent theme on sonship. But he said, if you don't, as a believer, understand the meaning of sonship, you might not be a believer at all. <laughs> it's like, I'm paraphrasing, but it's an incredible quote that he has in there is like, you don't understand what your rights and what you actually have through the things that Christ has done for you if you do not understand biblical sonship. And that's why this, um, this book, I kind of say in there, like it's an unfolding thriller, the Bible, that is. It's an unfolding thriller on sonship, and we are the ones invited to be the sons, the children, the sons and daughters. It's so incredible. Well, it is incredible, and it's a spiritual principle that resonates within us and then passed us into our lives. And, you know, when you think about being a son of God, when you think about being a child of God, um, the difference that makes in our lives, because we know that we are fully loved, we are fully secure in our lives here and in eternity, um, we have full access to our Father who loves us and wants to provide for us. You know, maybe somebody watching right now is feeling like, I want that access to God. I want to know what it's like to know God as my Father. Uh, where would they start, Daniel? Honestly, a really beautiful place to start is the way that the saints of old started, which was on their face in humility to before the Father, saying, Father, forgive me. <laughs> this, is, this is the starting point, because when we actually even realize, and maybe someone watching right now will realize, oh my goodness, I've been so disconnected from the Heavenly Father, you can literally, with absolute joy in your heart, not, not with condemnation, but with joy, you can ask the Father to forgive you. And the instant that that disconnection is broken through the unforgiveness and the brokenness, you all of a sudden go, wow, I am a child of God. And then you begin to pray and you begin to read those passages that talk about what it means to be known by the Father, that he came like Jesus, the Father God sent his son into the world, not to condemn, but to save the world from condemnation through Jesus Christ, that you were actually saved, set apart, and according to Romans, predestined to know him. So when you realize that and you go, okay, God knew me before time, before I was ever created, God knew me, then you start to realize that you actually are precious in his sight, that you actually are made in the image of God, that you actually have a future and a hope. And when you realize that, it's like now I'm talking to as a child talks to his father. And this literally happened as I tried to sleep last night. My son, who's three years old, called, you know, I hear him through the monitor. Daddy, I need you. I mean, how beautiful a call for a father to hear that you actually need your heavenly father. That's what he wants to hear from you. And then when he hears that, I mean, what did I do? I crawled into the bed. I put my arm around him. I stroked his hair. An intimate moment of connection between a father and son. That is your heavenly father, except so much more than we could even understand in the physical. So just imagine that level of the father's love for you. And then 
accept it. <laughs> that's, that's ultimately the big thing, isn't it, for human beings? Accept it, embrace it, be thankful, and it's such a beautiful experience. Indeed it is, and it's life-changing. And for those watching right now who say, I want to accept that, I want to accept the love of God, my Father, and get to know my Heavenly Father, you can always call our prayer lines, one 866 273 Someone can help introduce you to Jesus and get you on the path of sonship. Daniel, I know the journey that sonship can have in our lives as we realize we're children of God and that we are on a journey with our Father uh, in this life and in the next. And I'm so thankful for your book, Sons of the Father, which captures this so well and encourages us on this journey. Where can people get your new book? Probably the best place is Amazon. Um, you can order it on Amazon and uh, there's, you know, the Kindle version and the, the paperback. Um, if someone wants to go specifically to our website, they can find it at breathoflifemedia.com. That's great. Well, Daniel, we're so excited to get that book into people's hands and we're so thankful that you joined us today. Have a great day. Thank you.